Hi there, this is Dak Castiano and in this video I'm going to show you this 1968 Oldsmobile made by ERKL in a 1 to 18 scale. This is a Hearst Olds, so we're going to unbox this car and take a better look at it. So if you like those muscle cars from the 1960s and 70s, see this video thoroughly. And also, subscribe my channel and leave your like below. So let's unbox this thing and take a better look at it. As usual, I refer to some books, and one of the books I like is The Scar of the 1960s with some information about several cars from 1960 to 1969, and that includes some muscle cars. Right here, we have some information on a couple of holes. One of them is a Hearst, just like the one I'm going to show you, but just a different color, and the other one is a 442 which I'm not going to show right now, but it's basically the same car, but only it's a convertible. And a Hearst was equipped with a 455 turnout of V8 with 390 horsepower. So it was quite an engine, really. And here we have the Oles. This Oles Hearst with those Hearst shifters stickers on the door and Hearst equipped sticker on the front fender was probably a promotional car at the time and it has some it has different wheels and from the front to the rear it was probably a sort of a drag racing car it was something like at the time and in 1968 uh, General Motors car bodies have changed completely to this, this this new line so this line looks like the one in the Chevelle and the Pontiac and the Buick as well Oldsmobile for 68 was very nice. It kept about the same front we had in 1967. The same aspect, I mean. But the car was completely new. The Olds logo right here, new horizontal tail lights with the Oldsmobile logo right here in a chrome trim and a trunk lid. And in the front, the separate headlights by the blinkers and the central grille. Just similar to 1967. This car looks nice. This model car unfortunately doesn't have an opening trunk, which is quite common in some older ERTL models, but still a very nice model car. The front of this car, as I've said before, reminds a little the one on the 1967, in which we had more separate headlights and the blinkers in the middle. It's uh, about the same design from 1959. I'm going to show you a 1959 O's, and we are going to notice that the headlights are separate as well. In 1966, we used to have the headlights closer, like this. And I've seen a car in which, uh, I've seen a nose on the internet, in which the owner put a third headlight here so it had six headlights it looked looked a little weird but it didn't look bad at all this car looks very nice and very elegant I like the central grille and the, it's not actually a grille but the mash is pretty much correct the bumper is pretty much correct with this Hearst license plate and the chrome is in pretty good quality the trim is in pretty good quality the hood is it's okay as no there are no misalignments no problems at all. The fake air intakes and the antenna, which is good, good as well. The trim around the windshield is cast in metal, but it's, no, it's not painted. So I will probably do some further detailing in this car. And headlights and blinkers are quite good, are very realistic. And there are a couple of air intakes right here in the bottom which was very common in the Oldsmobiles at its at this time. As we open the hood, we can see a 455 engine. It's made in red and looks very nice. A warning about a pan, hose, radiator, the front panel, 
The inside of the fenders were made in a kind of a plastic at a time. That's the reason they are made in orange. It was an option for Oldsmobiles. And this was very interesting because it was sort of a protection against corrosion, especially in those takes in which they had to put some salt during the winter time to melt the, to melt the ice. There's a trim here, the hood. The hood looks good. The hinges look a little thick, but they look okay. There's no big deal. The brake system, valve covers, the air filter, the details in general, they're quite simple. They sometimes look a little bit like plastic, but it's okay. It's not a big issue, really, since this is a cheaper model. It's not a top quality model, just like the other ones. Windshield wipers are made here uh, cast in plastic, in a piece of black plastic, but it's also okay. It's not a big issue at all. And since they're hidden, there's no big deal. One more look at the engine, the alternator, the reservoir, and a battery. It looks good. Simple, but good. The hood shuts correctly. No gaps, no misalignments at all. As we open the driver's door, we can take a look at this interior that's made in black and very well made. The floor is all made in plastic with a texture that simulates a carpet. The steering wheel and the dashboard simulate a wood grain with this brown color and a three-spoke sports steering wheel was typical of the olds at the time. We can see the gauges and the paddles. There's an automatic transmission, the horse shifter right here in the central, right there in the central console, and the seats that tilt to the front. There are no seat belts, but they're very well made. This car has no headliner, but just sun visors made in the acrylic. Same piece that makes the windows. The door shuts correctly. No gaps, no misalignments at Passenger all. Passenger side, same thing. One more look at the dashboard, glove compartment, the air outlets, her shifter, passenger seat that tilts as well, black carpet, black interior, all black. And door that shuts correctly as well. Handle as a separate piece and a lock cast in metal and painted on. Looks nice. Rear of the car looks very nice, very aggressive and very good looking really. We have the nose mobile here in the rear trim. Trunk lid is fixed. The rear deck is all fixed. Looks very nice. The lock is painted on. Uh, tail lights look very good. Dual exhaust pipes look very good. Reverse lights and the bumper look very good as well. That's a very nice looking rear for this Oldsmobile at the time. And it would be a 442 if it had a dual exhaust, that's number two, a four barrel carburetor, and a floor on the floor. So that's 442, that's what 442 stands for. And in this case, we have a Hurst shifter. The bottom of the car looks very nice. It's body and frame. So we can see the frame and the body dual exhaust, a gas tank, slick tires in the rear, thin tires in the front, tires and wheels are very well made, wheels actually steer and steer with steering wheel, the engine and training look very nice, the engine looks a little plastic but the training looks a little more realistic, the drive shaft is fixed, rear axle is fixed, front axle as well. There's, there are no working suspensions. The two air intakes in the front. In general, this bottom looks very nice and this car looks great. From 0 to 10, I would give this car a 9. I think it deserves. It's a very nice looking car. It's a very nice looking model car. Although the rear deck, uh, although the trunk lid doesn't open, it's still a very nice model car made by RTL. And since it's a simpler model, it's an older model, it's got a very good quality for what's supposed to be and what was made at the time. So it's a very interesting car. 
I would advise anyone to anyone who likes muscle cars, especially Oldsmobiles, to have a car like that in a collection. So I'd like to thank you for all likes and views, for all, for all your comments. Please don't forget to subscribe, to give me a thumbs up, and let me know what you think about this car in this video in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.